Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Okay. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and I want to welcome you to the Northtown News Magazine today. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Boy, do I need a haircut. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. For the identity of the real Marty Levinson, stay tuned to the Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon light city, sweet home Chicago. Two, two is four. Four, four, six. Come on, baby, now get your business face. Come on. Honey, don't you hey there, I am really Marty Levinson. Don't let anybody fool you. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Avi Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web, www.ntnm.org. Over 200,000 shows watched and YouTube, please fix our clicker because it's not clicking. You know, I can click, on, well, whatever. It's not working, guys. Community policing, we're all big on that. I wish the Chicago Police Department was too, but we're still hanging in there. Um, I, I can't, t the schedules have changed in the 24th District. So really, you've got to check with um, 311 of the Community Policing Office, 312-744-6321 to uh, find out various information. Uh, our next guest is somebody who appeared um, on the show a couple years ago mm -hmm. uh, when he ran for Congress in the 10th District and somebody, uh, he's got a great story and we're kind of reintroducing him to you in a different light. So um, because he's not running, well he's, we'll, we'll let you tell you what he's doing. <laughs> we're talking about Dr. Ari Friedman. Nice to see you again, Avi. First of all, pleasure. And um, you know, this is a brand new campaign. Um, why don't you give us some background on yourself? Uh, well, uh, I'm uh, sort of a kid from the area. I grew up in uh, Highland Park, went to Solomon Schechter, uh, graduated at the University of Chicago. Uh, after graduating college, I spent uh, seven years on active duty as a Navy helicopter pilot. Uh, and after finishing up active duty, went to medical school at the University of Illinois and have a practice on the North Shore, uh, which I built essentially from scratch and have been there for about 11 years. Very cool. And by the way, one of the things you're leaving out um, you were, I believe it's called a Nighthawk helicopter? I was a Seahawk helicopter. Seahawk, uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't uh, know the Navy name. <laughs> yeah, these were H60, H60 helicopters, and we uh, flew them off of cruisers and destroyers uh, and participated in Desert Storm. Um, they had two deployments during that period. And, uh, in fact, of my oldest daughter's first two years of life, spent a, a full year underway at sea or in foreign ports. Um, so it was a part of a very important period in time. It was a real privilege. Very cool. Was was your um, wife in, the, in that area with you? or probably? Uh, So I'm, mm. uh, that, that marriage doesn't uh, exist anymore. Oh, sorry uh, about my, that. My <laughs> uh, current wife is actually my sister's best friend from high school. We've known each other since we were teenagers. Yeah. Um, together we have four children and uh, we've been married for going on, if I had to do the math, about 10 years. And by the way, she's a very nice lady. Yes, she is. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, her father and Sonny, you worked together at the Merck in some, uh, there was some connection about trading. Right. Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, my uh, father-in-law was a trader. Uh, I believe uh, Pork Bellies was his, his pit yeah. and uh, had a company, uh, uh, GNP Commodities, which uh, sort of he closed down not too many years ago. And... Uh, you know, that's sort of, I think, where the connection with Sonny came from. Yeah, see, I, I, I try to remember these things. People have accused me of having a pornographic memory. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in any event, I, I do want to, I, I also want to mention, for those people who haven't seen you interviewed before mm -hmm. for, for this, that um, part of what you were doing um, in Desert Storm was you were uh, busy landing ships in the middle of the night during missions and stuff. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, t all told for my uh, for my naval career, I had uh, 400. I made six, 406 shipboard landings, 183 of them were at night, and uh, you know that was an exciting time. It's not something I would do in my 40s, uh, but for uh, somebody in their early 20s, it was uh, adventure. No, it definitely sounds cool, and I got to tell you, I finally wound up seeing Black Hawk Down about a month ago. I got on Netflix just before the the price raised. <laughs> sure. I'm going to be off of there soon <laughs> enough. 
But, um, you know, it was kind of, I was looking at that helicopter because I know from what you told me there was similarities to what you were, and I was thinking about you when I was watching it's that. It's essentially the same airframe as a Blackhawk. Um, they moved the, uh, the tail strut forward to fit on a small deck. And that gives you a sense of how small some of these ship decks were, is that they actually had to take the strut forward because the tail hangs off the ship. And, uh, and, those are, and they fill it with avionics and anti-submarine warfare equipment and radar, and that's what we flew around. Cool. You ever get a submarine? We did a lot of anti-submarine work. Uh, you know, I got uh, into the Navy during Ronald Reagan's time as a, in the presidency. And if you recall, that was the Cold War. And so we trained, our primary mission was anti-submarine warfare, and we trained all the time. I mean, those were very serious days. We were planning for World War III. That's what our mission was. Um, we talked about putting aircraft carrier battle groups into Vladivostok Harbor and uh, stopping their nuclear missile submarines. And, you know, we were, I was right in the middle of all of that. It was, a, it was you know, a very heady time. It definitely sounds, and it does definitely sounds cool. I just think that the... Um, you know, not that, I, that I'm belittling the danger. People hear this stuff. They don't realize, like, even a policeman, the, the danger a person has to go through and, and the risks and all that. Well, I, um, several of my flight school classmates were killed in military mishaps uh, in aircraft, um, you know, at very young ages. Uh, the, the environment is just very challenging. I will say that they've done, made tremendous strides. Uh, naval aviation uh, has continued to get safer and safer over the years uh, and is uh, even significantly more safe than when I was on active duty. When I was on active duty, it was dramatically more safe than it had been even 10 or 20 years before that. So uh, they, they're doing a spectacular job now and doing some things that even we never thought of being able to do. Very cool. And what you were doing was cool beyond belief. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, uh, it was, like I said, it was a very exciting time. It was a great privilege. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, anyway, you know what? Let's talk uh, politics. Sure. You, seem, you know, it, it seems like being a doctor isn't, isn't good enough. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you need the high paying job of, uh, of, of being a politician right, to, right. Uh, to make your life go around. So let, tell, us, tell us what you're doing right now. Well, uh, I'm in the race. Oh, and by the way, before I interrupt, thanks CJ. I wanna always thank people who were here. So uh, CJ uh, brought me here today. He's a, a good friend of mine and a member of our campaign. Uh, I'm running for state senate in the 29th district. Um, and that's the district that was held, um, still held by Susan Garrett. Yeah. Uh, it's primarily a North Shore district, uh, and she's retiring. Uh, and it's also been redistricted, um, and now includes, uh, um, essentially runs from uh, Great Lakes Naval Station in the north, um, down through Lake Bluff and Lake Forest, includes Highland Park and Highwood, Deerfield, and then uh, the western parts of Northbrook, it goes through Wheeling, but a big chunk of Buffalo Grove and some of uh, Arlington Heights and a little touch of Palatine. A lot of Jewish neighborhoods in there. <laughs> um, I haven't done the math, but I believe if I was going to actually sit down and calculate out Jewish neighborhoods, that it's, I, I believe it, it could qualify as the most Jewish state senate district in the state. It very well might be. Yeah, and, um, yeah I mean, I'm in one that uh, is increasingly um, less Jewish, and mm -hmm. unfortunately we have the wrong Jewish senator here, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. Do you have, I mean, are there a bunch of people running? Are you, are you the sole candidate? Um, so uh, I'm, right now, uh, the mm -hmm. way that the, the race is shaping up is that I'm the sole Republican candidate. Uh, and on the Democrat side is uh, the current West Deerfield Township supervisor who's running as a Democrat. And, and though we appear to be the only two in the race at this point. Oh, so this will really be a slugging out one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> 14 months long, absolutely. We're looking forward to it. Wow. Yeah, that'll well, be... Uh... You know, look, I think that you know, the race itself, I think, is sort of a, a microcosm of the battle we're fighting here in, in Illinois. I mean, here we... Look, I, I'm a businessman. Uh, yeah. You know, 10, 11 years ago, I left residency, hung up a shingle. And, and for the last decade, have been building a, a successful medical practice, false modesty aside, yeah. a self-built... Self successful medical practice with my uh, business partners in a difficult environment. I mean, medicine is the most difficult business environment I've ever been involved in. And it's certainly, I think a lot of people would agree, a very complex place to try and make a living. And my cousin, the cardiologist, uh, he retired due to the, some of the complications right. earlier than he would have liked to. He just right. didn't, couldn't handle the insurance anymore. Well, if you poll doctors, 65% of doctors uh, um, think that things are only going to get worse for physicians. Um, on the other hand, we have on the other side of the race a Democrat uh, who is the West Deerfield Township Supervisor. Now, I challenge most people uh, with this. How many people really know what a township does? You know, one of the problems we have in here in Illinois is we have these layers and layers of anonymous 
taxing authorities, governmental bodies, and nobody really knows what they do. They're not really accountable to anybody. Nobody knows who participates in them, and they churn out salaries and seem to function of their own accord. And, and I, I honestly don't really know what they do for a living over at the <laughs> West Deerfield Township. I mean, I have some sense. They, they've got about three miles of roads they watch over, and they do some charity work and do some welfare work. But, but really, this is a situation where you have somebody who's been in government for 15 years in a position nobody really understands, no layperson understands, um, and we're going to have a race between her and me, a businessman who's been in the independent, you know, who's been in the private sector all of his life, except for when I was in the military. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's going to be a, a really important race in Illinois. No, it sounds it. And it's, it's you know, the Republican-Democratic thing. That's going to be a very, that's very interesting stuff right now, definitely. Well, and it's a great district. It, um, it pulled in some Republican areas. Yeah. Uh, all, now it has all of Lake Forest and Lake Bluff where it didn't before. It gave away some Democrat districts. Um, gave up some of the Glencoe area it had before. And now is is pretty even. Um, Bill Brady uh, um, lost the, the new district by about 4.5%. Um, not much. Not much. And, and you know, I know Bill and I uh, have a lot of respect for him, but it wasn't, in our specific area, it was not an optimal campaign. I think even he might admit that. No, as a matter of fact, he, he, even here it's like he, I can't believe Quinn won re-election. Right, right. <laughs> And then in a, a our reasonable Republican, a, a Republican candidate closer to the middle, let's say, would have uh, would have won that election. Or you know, had a more organized campaign, perhaps, in some of these areas. Well, he only lost by about helped, twenty thousand yeah. uh, votes overall. Um, and then uh, uh, Mark Kirk won the area by twelve points, and so that's a pretty good range for a Republican candidate to operate within, particularly somebody who's essentially lived in that area, you know, most of his life. So um, we've got a really great chance of winning this state Senate seat, which nobody ever thought was available. And uh, that's one of the six we need to win the state Senate for a new direction in Illinois. Oh, I sure would like to see some of the uh, <laughs> a certain committee chairmen that need to be retired. <laughs> yep. Or simply um, become ranking members of the committees instead. You know. Well, ranking members of the committee is, is, is better than being committee chairman. Right. In some cases, retired, like in my particular Senate seat, Ira. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> so, what are what are, the, what are the what are the issues in the campaign? Are there issues? Look, I mean, the issues are or? the issue. This is this is, as far as I'm concerned, a statewide campaign. Yeah. I mean, this this idea of what we've been doing in Illinois for ten years and where we are now um, is that it's been a failure, right? I mean, we've got ten years of policies that have now resulted in Illinois having one of the very worst business environments. Multiple polls now of ex chief executive officers have said it's one of the two or three worst places to yeah, do that business. came out the other day or two. As a matter of fact, we've also got the 49th highest fine writing out of 50 states. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, we've got the, as far as um, just looking at our balance sheet, we have the worst balance sheet of any state in the country. Um, we're, if, if you sold off Illinois' government, yeah. lock, stock, and barrel, including the the rest stops. Um, we're still in the hole, thirty-seven billion dollars. Interestingly, you know? because I would have really thought that uh, we've got some of the best uh, government officials that money can buy over here. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I think other people probably wouldn't think they're worth as much as, as they might. Yeah, and by so, the way, let's not forget the fifty-one percent funding on the pensions. <laughs> right. Uh, we're you know, so by some figures, we're eighty plus billion in the hole. I've heard numbers as high as two hundred billion in the hole, and that doesn't include the smaller governmental bodies like townships and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't know if you, Barron's has an interesting story, you should check it out. Okay. It was a front page story on uh, the various states and what kind of shape they're in. And uh, yeah, we're... Right. <laughs> so, you know, and, and then the, I think the most important thing about what this, you know, what our environment is, is that every single solitary month since the Quinn, Madigan, Cullerton tax increase was put into effect, Illinois has fewer, has had fewer and fewer people employed, fewer and fewer jobs in Illinois than the month before. Since it, since it passed, since it went into effect January 1st, we now have a, over 105 fewer employed Illinoisans um, in our state. And that's our tax base. It keeps getting smaller and smaller because they're moving other places, companies are taking those jobs, people are leaving town, and, uh, and that's a downward spiral that is not going to be recoverable unless we create something different here in Illinois. Now, Look, this is, I'm, I'm going to lay this plan out. It's not going to be, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be easy to pass these things um, because in Illinois, things aren't always so easy. 
But imagine how different the business environment would be if we did some simple things. Simple in, you know, simple in concept, not simple necessarily to do. Say we repealed the tax increase on corporations and individuals. We passed a sensible budget based on the 22 pages of tax cuts that the Senate Republicans put out there, all of which were ignored. We reformed pensions, Medicaid, and workers' compensation, and we passed across the board tort reform that made this not a judicial hellhole. Now, if we did those things in, say, a session, a couple of years, uh, I think that people have a very different view of Illinois, because this is actually a great state. There's a lot of good things about it, but I'll tell you something. If I was starting out right now, I would choose another state. Of course. And that's, and you know, we see these numbers of how many fewer and fewer Illinoisans are employed, but that doesn't address how many people, how many jobs never came here in the first place. We have no idea how many people just took a turn away. And a lot of people did. And in the industrial parks uh, in places like Wisconsin, just north of, of Illinois, have slews of companies that would have been in Illinois. Absolutely if it would have been a more favorable business environment. There's, I have medical colleagues who've done that. Well, as a matter of fact, a number of doctors don't want to locate here, right, because of the, you know, the, the way the laws work that way. We are running out of time at this stage, so I um, want to thank you very much, Dr. Ari Friedman. Um, website? Uh, it's www.friedmanforsenate.com www.friedman with a d for senate.com that's will, f o r uh, for uh, f o r and but if you misspell it they're all directed to the right place smart <laughs> <laughs> very smart always a pleasure to see you um, you know uh, hopefully you will be uncontested throughout the primary thing thank you cj for bringing them i want to thank my entire technical crew sunny hirsch